Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. It's when you keep your imagination, your thoughts, your meditating on the Lord day and night, that's when you have perfect peace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. I'm now into my second week of teaching on the power of imagination. I've got a brand new book out on this, and I tell you, this is a powerful, powerful book. The teaching is just awesome. I've also got uh, CDs and DVDs, and I would encourage you to please get this. Like I said, this is my second week of teaching, and I haven't got time to go back through what I've already ministered, but most people do not appreciate imagination, teaching on imagination. They think that that's fantasy. They think I need to be realistic. And most people downplay the importance of imagination. But I've shown from scriptures, Genesis chapter 11, verse 6, where the Lord said that nothing that they have imagined will be restrained unto them. Our imagination is so powerful that it actually challenged God's plans for the human race. And he had to to confuse the languages at the Tower of Babel. Your imagination is your conception. That's literally what the Hebrew word that was translated imagination means. It means conception. It's where you conceive things. You can't give birth to any type of thing without, first of all, conceiving it. And that can be stated negatively or positively. I've been talking about the positive use of your imagination, but it's the same thing. You can't sin without, first of all, seeing yourself sinning in your heart. Man, that is a great truth. That is a powerful truth. I'm going to deal with that more out of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 15. But we've been talking about imagination. What I started doing yesterday, I used Psalms chapter 1, verse 2, and compared it with Psalms chapter 2, verse 1. In Psalms chapter 1, verse 2, it says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And then Psalms chapter 2, verse 1 says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? And my point that I was making is that the exact same Hebrew word that was translated meditate in Psalms 1, 2 was translated imagine in Psalms chapter 2, verse 1. And so from this, you can see that to meditate in the Word of God, you've got to let the Word of God, these truths that the Word of God is stating, paint a picture on the inside of you. And I gave examples of me imagining David, you know, going out and fighting Goliath. When I was in the Holy Lands, I actually walked out into the Valley of Elah. I went and got five smooth stones. I stood and I looked. And what it did, it helped my imagination. And when people say that going to the Holy Lands just makes the Bible come alive, what they're talking about is their imagination finally begin to start picturing it. Most people just read the Bible and they don't picture it. Or you could say it this way, they don't meditate. They don't imagine it, what it's really like. It's when you begin to take the Word of God and not just facts, not just information, but you take it and you let it paint a picture on the inside of you. That's when the Word really begins to start working. I gave examples last week. I'm just hitting a couple of things because I want to talk about meditating in the Word. And I gave examples last week about how I took John 14, 12 that says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Now that's a promise that if you are a believer in the Lord, you'll do greater, the same works that Jesus did and even greater. And Jesus is the one that said this in Mark chapter 16, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Many people have read that, but have you ever seen yourself laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover? Have you ever seen yourself casting out devils? See, that's meditating. And it's only when you take the Word and meditate on it to where it becomes alive to you that it really begins to release its power. Meditation is where you take the truths of God's Word and personalize them, and then they come out through you. 
THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT THERE'S A DISCONNECT. THEY CAN READ THE WORD. THEY MIGHT EVEN BE ABLE TO QUOTE IT, BUT IT NEVER MANIFESTS IN THEIR LIFE. AND THE REASON THAT THERE'S THAT DISCONNECTION IS BECAUSE YOU HAVEN'T IMAGINED, YOU HAVEN'T SEEN YOURSELF, YOU HAVEN'T SEEN THE WORD WORKING ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. SO LAST WEEK I SHARED HOW I TOOK THOSE SCRIPTURES THAT I'D DO THE SAME WORKS THAT JESUS DID. HE RAISED PEOPLE FROM THE DEAD. HE SAW BLIND EYES OPEN, DEAF EARS OPEN. I TOOK SCRIPTURES, AND I NOT ONLY READ IT AND STUDIED IT FROM THE STANDPOINT OF JESUS DOING, BUT SINCE HE SAID THAT I WOULD DO THE SAME WORKS, WHEN HE CALLED LAZARUS FROM THE DEAD, I IMAGINED MYSELF CALLING LAZARUS FROM THE DEAD. I ACTUALLY STOOD THERE AND SAID, LAZARUS, COME FORTH. I ACTUALLY SAW MYSELF DOING THESE THINGS. AND I KNOW SOME OF YOU THINK, WELL, THAT'S MAKE-BELIEVE. NO, IT'S MAKE-BELIEVE. IT'S FANTASY IF IT'S NOT BASED IN THE WORD OF GOD. BUT WHEN YOU'VE GOT A strip SCRIPTURE TO STAND ON THAT SAYS THE SAME WORKS THAT I DID WILL YOU DO ALSO, IT IS NOT FANTASY. IT'S NOT MAKE-BELIEVE. IT'S NOT FOOLISHNESS FOR YOU TO SEE YOURSELF DOING IT. AND I CAN EVEN GO AS FAR AS TO SAY THAT IF YOU DON'T SEE YOURSELF DOING IT, IN YOUR IMAGINATION, IF YOU DON'T EMBRACE THIS WITH YOUR HEART AND CLOSE YOUR EYES AND SEE YOURSELF RAISING PEOPLE FROM THE DEAD AND SEEING BLIND EYES OPEN, AND I'M NOT TALKING ABOUT JUST FANTASIZING AND COMING UP WITH YOUR OWN THING, BUT GO TO THE WORD, FIND EXAMPLES, AND SEE YOURSELF DOING WHAT OTHER PEOPLE HAVE DONE IN THE WORD. IF YOU CAN'T SEE IT IN YOUR HEART, YOU WON'T SEE IT ON THE OUTSIDE. Well, THOSE ARE MAJOR, MAJOR STATEMENTS. MEDITATION IS POWERFUL. A VERSE THAT I'VE ALREADY QUOTED, JOSHUA CHAPTER 1, VERSE 8, SAYS, THIS BOOK OF THE LAW SHALL NOT DEPART FROM the, OUT OF THY MOUTH, BUT THOU SHALT MEDITATE THEREIN DAY AND NIGHT. AGAIN, THAT LINKS MEDITATION ON YOU NEED TO MEDITATE ON THE WORD. DON'T MEDITATE ON YOU BECOMING A ROCK STAR, ON YOU GOING OUT AND, and uh, YOU KNOW, DOING THINGS THAT HAVE NO BASIS IN THE WORD OF GOD, BUT TAKE PROMISES ABOUT YOUR MARRIAGE, ABOUT YOUR HEALTH, ABOUT YOUR PROSPERITY, ABOUT WHATEVER IT IS THAT GOD'S WORD PROMISES, AND YOU TAKE THE WORD AND YOU MEDITATE. YOU SEE THESE THINGS COMING TO PASS. AND IF YOU CAN SEE IT ON THE INSIDE, THEN YOU'LL SEE IT ON THE OUTSIDE. MAN, THAT IS AWESOME. LET ME SHARE A PASSAGE WITH YOU OUT OF 1 TIMOTHY, CHAPTER 4, AND IN VERSE 12, I'M GOING TO READ A NUMBER OF VERSES HERE, BUT IT SAYS IN VERSE 12, LET NO MAN DESPISE THY YOUTH, BUT BE THOU AN EXAMPLE OF THE BELIEVERS IN WORD, IN CONVERSATION, IN CHARITY, IN SPIRIT, IN FAITH, IN PURITY. YOU KNOW, I'VE GOT AN ENTIRE SERIES I TEACH IN OUR BIBLE COLLEGE ON THIS. THOSE ARE POWERFUL THINGS, BUT I'M GOING TO MOVE ON TO ANOTHER POINT. IN VERSE 13, TILL I COME, GIVE ATTENDANCE TO READING, TO EXHORTATION, TO DOCTRINE. NEGLECT NOT THE GIFT THAT IS IN THEE, WHICH WAS GIVEN THEE BY PROPHECY WITH THE LAYING ON OF THE HANDS OF THE PRESBYTERY. VERSE 15, IT SAYS, MEDITATE UPON THESE THINGS. GIVE THYSELF wholly TO THEM, THAT THY PROFITING MAY APPEAR UNTO ALL. THIS IS A FURTHER EXPLANATION OF WHAT MEDITATION IS. MEDITATION IS JUST GIVING YOURSELF wholly TO SOMETHING, FOCUSING ON IT TO THE POINT THAT YOU AREN'T THINKING ABOUT ANYTHING ELSE. YOU KNOW, WE ALL HAVE TO FUNCTION IN THIS WORLD. WE'VE GOT JOBS, YOU'VE GOT FAMILY, YOU'VE GOT RESPONSIBILITIES. THERE ARE CERTAIN THINGS THAT YOU HAVE TO DO. AND IF YOU AREN'T CAREFUL, YOU WILL BECOME SO FOCUSED ON ALL OF THE NATURAL THINGS THAT YOU DO THAT YOU LOSE SIGHT OF THE SPIRITUAL THINGS, THAT YOU, you FORGET THE SPIRITUAL REALM AND YOU AREN'T FOCUSED ON IT. YOU KNOW, TO ME, IT'S LIKE USING ONE OF THESE 35 MILLIMETER CAMERAS WHERE YOU FOCUS THROUGH THE LENS. AND I REMEMBER GOING TO THE ZOO AND TAKING PICTURES, AND YOU CAN EITHER FOCUS ON THAT CHAIN LINK FENCE IF YOU CHANGE THE FOCUS SO THAT IT'S FOCUSED ON THE FENCE, THEN THE ANIMAL IN THE BACKGROUND JUST BLURS OUT AND YOU CAN'T EVEN SEE IT. BUT IF YOU FOCUS ON THE ANIMAL THAT'S IN THAT CAGE, THE CHAIN LINK FENCE JUST BLURS AND GOES AWAY, AND IT'S LIKE YOU CAN'T EVEN SEE IT. YOU NEED TO BE FOCUSED ON THE SPIRITUAL THINGS. YOU NEED TO FOCUS ON WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS. THIS IS WHAT PAUL IS TELLING TIMOTHY. GIVE YOURSELF wholly TO IT. MEDITATE UPON THESE THINGS DAY AND NIGHT, AND THEN YOUR PROFITING WILL APPEAR UNTO ALL. 
BUT THE PROBLEM IS WE LET THIS LIFE JUST DOMINATE US. WE GET BUSY MAKING A LIVING, RAISING OUR KIDS, TAKING THEM TO THEIR SOCCER PRACTICE, TO, the, to ALL OF THESE OTHER THINGS, AND YOU CAN BECOME SO BUSY THAT YOU AREN'T FOCUSED ON THE THINGS OF GOD. BUT SEE, THIS IS WHERE MEDITATION COMES IN. HERE IS ANOTHER GREAT TRUTH. THIS IS POWERFUL. YOU COULD TAKE THIS TO THE BANK. THIS WILL PAY DIVIDENDS RIGHT AWAY. DID YOU KNOW THE SAME PART OF YOU THAT WORRIES IS THE SAME PART OF YOU THAT MEDITATES? ALL WORRY IS IS MEDITATION ON SOMETHING NEGATIVE. YOU CAN GO TO YOUR JOB, AND IF YOU HAD PROBLEMS, SAY, IN YOUR MARRIAGE, YOU COULD DO YOUR JOB, YOU COULD FUNCTION, AND YET YOU NEVER HAVE IT OUT OF YOUR THOUGHTS THE WHOLE DAY WORRYING ABOUT WHAT'S GOING TO HAPPEN. Or IS OUR MARRIAGE GOING TO SURVIVE? OR YOU TALK ABOUT FINANCES. YOU CAN DO YOUR JOB, AND YET THE WHOLE TIME YOU'RE JUST THINKING, HOW AM I GOING TO DEAL WITH THIS? GOD, IT LOOKS LIKE A TRAIN WRECK, AND THAT'S WHAT WE CALL WORRY. EVERY PERSON WATCHING ME KNOWS THAT YOU HAVE BEEN ABLE TO FUNCTION, AND YET YOU WORRY CONSTANTLY. YOU WORRY ALL DAY LONG. YOU MAY WORRY WEEKS OR MONTHS AT A TIME. ALL WORRY IS, IS MEDITATION ON THE NEGATIVE. MEDITATION ON THE POSITIVE IS WHAT WE CALL A POSITIVE IMAGINATION. AND YOU CAN GO TO WORK, AND YOU CAN KEEP YOUR MIND STAYED ON GOD THE ENTIRE TIME YOU'RE WORKING. YOU CAN BE THINKING ABOUT, MAN, I AM BORN AGAIN. I'M A BRAND NEW PERSON. I CAN DO ALL THINGS THROUGH CHRIST. GOD, I THANK YOU THAT YOU ARE GIVING ME WISDOM. YOU KNOW, JUST YESTERDAY, I WAS WALKING AROUND SAYING HI TO OUR EMPLOYEES, AND ONE OF OUR EMPLOYEES THAT MAKES ALL OF THE DIFFERENT VERSIONS OF OUR TELEVISION PROGRAM HE'S GOT, I DON'T EVEN KNOW, BUT THERE WAS A DOZEN SCREENS, AND HE WAS DOING ALL OF THIS STUFF, AND RIGHT AS I WALKED IN, HE SAYS, I JUST DO NOT UNDERSTAND THIS. WHAT IS WRONG? AND I WALKED IN, AND I SAID, HEY, YOU CAN DO ALL THINGS THROUGH CHRIST WHO STRENGTHENS YOU. AND I SAW HIM JUST A FEW MINUTES AGO, AND I SAID, DID YOU EVER FIGURE IT OUT? AND HE SAID, I SURE DID. AND HE SAID, he said THAT HE TOOK THAT LITTLE SCRIPTURE, I CAN DO ALL THINGS THROUGH CHRIST WHO STRENGTHENS ME, AND HE JUST PRAYED, AND GOD SHOWED HIM HOW TO FIX ALL THESE COMPUTERS AND MAKE IT WORK. YOU CAN KEEP YOUR MIND STAYED ON GOD. YOU CAN BE THINKING ABOUT, MAN, I'M A NEW CREATURE, THAT GOD IS WITH ME. WHATEVER I SET MY HAND UNTO IS BLESSED. YOU CAN MEDITATE ON THOSE THINGS THE WHOLE TIME. SO FOR PEOPLE WHO SAY THAT, YOU KNOW, I'M NOT LIKE A PREACHER. I CAN'T JUST SPEND MY WHOLE DAY LOOKING OUT THE WINDOW DAYDREAMING. I'VE GOT TO WORK. IF YOU CAN WORRY ALL DAY LONG, YOU CAN MEDITATE. ALL DAY LONG. MEDITATION IN GOD'S WORD IS JUST A POSITIVE IMAGINATION, WHEREAS WORRY IS A NEGATIVE IMAGINATION, ANTICIPATING THE WORST, SEEING PROBLEMS INSTEAD OF six SOLUTIONS. EVERY ONE OF YOU CAN WORRY AND STILL FUNCTION. YOU CAN ALSO MEDITATE AND STILL FUNCTION. LET ME SHARE THIS PASSAGE WITH YOU OUT OF SECOND uh, CORINTHIANS AND IN CHAPTER 10. SECOND CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 10, BEGINNING WITH VERSE 3, IT SAYS, FOR THOUGH WE WALK IN THE FLESH, WE DO NOT WAR AFTER THE FLESH. FOR THE WEAPONS OF OUR WARFARE ARE NOT CARNAL, BUT MIGHTY THROUGH GOD TO THE PULLING DOWN OF STRONGHOLDS, CASTING DOWN IMAGINATIONS. THESE ARE TALKING ABOUT NEGATIVE IMAGINATIONS, BUT YOU HAVE SPIRITUAL WEAPONS THAT CAST DOWN IMAGINATIONS AND EVERY HIGH THING THAT EXALTS ITSELF AGAINST THE KNOWLEDGE OF GOD AND BRINGING INTO CAPTIVITY EVERY THOUGHT TO THE OBEDIENCE OF CHRIST. AGAIN, THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT THINK, HEY, I'VE GOT TO MAKE A LIVING. I'VE GOT THINGS TO DO. I CAN'T JUST SIT THERE AND MEDITATE ALL DAY LONG. THIS SAYS THAT WE HAVE SPIRITUAL WEAPONS THAT HAVE BEEN GIVEN UNTO US THAT WE CAN BRING EVERY THOUGHT INTO OBEDIENCE. IT WILL CAST DOWN EVERY HIGH IMAGINATION THAT EXALTS ITSELF AGAINST THE KNOWLEDGE OF GOD. AND YOU HAVE THE ABILITY TO DO THAT. YOU CAN CONTROL YOUR THOUGHTS. A LOT OF PEOPLE DON'T UNDERSTAND THAT. THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT THINK, WELL, I JUST CAN'T HELP IT. YOU KNOW, THIS PERSON SAID THIS TO ME, AND SO I'M JUST THINKING ABOUT WHAT THEY SAID. YOU CAN CONTROL THOSE THOUGHTS. I REMEMBER AN INSTANCE WHEN I WAS IN SEGAVILLE, TEXAS, AND THIS IS BACK WHEN WE WERE STRUGGLING FINANCIALLY. AND uh, ANYWAY, IT'S A LONG STORY, BUT JAMIE WAS SUPER PATIENT. JAMIE NEVER CRITICIZED ME, AND THE REASON THAT WE WERE HAVING FINANCIAL PROBLEMS WAS MY FAULT. I FELT CALLED TO THE MINISTRY, AND I THOUGHT I WAS SINNING AGAINST GOD IF I WENT AND WORKED A SECULAR JOB, WHICH WASN'T TRUE, BUT THAT'S THE WAY THAT I THOUGHT, AND SO I WAS GOING TO STAY FAITHFUL TO GOD, 
AND I WOULDN'T WORK. AND AS A RESULT, WE WEREN'T GETTING MONEY. I WASN'T MINISTERING TO VERY MANY PEOPLE, AND WE WERE STRUGGLING FINANCIALLY. AND JAMIE NEVER ONE TIME COMPLAINED. Well, WHAT A BLESSING SHE WAS. BUT I HEARD HER PRAYING ONE TIME. AND SHE SAYS, SHE WAS PRAYING TO THE LORD, AND SHE TOLD HIM, SHE SAID, YOU KNOW, HE'S, he's NOT WORKING, AND WE'VE STRUGGLED, AND I'LL TAKE IT, BUT IF MY BABY EVER GOES WITHOUT FOOD, SHE SAID, I'LL GO GET A JOB. I HEARD HER PRAYING THAT. SHE DIDN'T COMPLAIN TO ME, BUT I HEARD HER TALKING TO THE LORD. AND SO I KNEW THAT IT WAS SERIOUS, AND WE WERE DOWN TO THE LAST LITTLE BIT OF FOOD. JAMIE WENT OVER TO A FRIEND'S HOUSE TO WASH CLOTHES, AND WHEN SHE CAME BACK, WE WEREN'T GOING TO HAVE ANY FOOD FOR OUR SON, AND uh, I KNEW IT WAS GOING TO BE BAD. SO IT WAS A BAD SITUATION. I ACTUALLY CALLED... <laughs> I KNOW SOME OF YOU FIND THIS HARD TO BELIEVE, BUT I ACTUALLY CALLED Oral ROBERTS PRAYER TOWER AND ASKED FOR PRAYER SO THAT WE COULD GET A DOLLAR TO GO BUY BABY FOOD, BECAUSE, I MEAN, IT WAS... IT WAS DOWN TO THE WIRE. IT WAS BAD. SO ANYWAY, MY POINT IS THAT I DIDN'T SEE WHERE THE MONEY WAS GOING TO COME FROM. I DIDN'T KNOW HOW THINGS WERE GOING TO WORK OUT. AND I WAS HAVING THOUGHTS COME TO ME OF QUITTING THE MINISTRY, WHICH, AGAIN, I DIDN'T HAVE TO QUIT THE MINISTRY, BUT THE WAY I WAS THINKING AT THAT TIME, THAT'S THE WAY I SAW THINGS. SO I WAS HAVING THOUGHTS OF QUITTING THE MINISTRY. I WAS HAVING THOUGHTS OF, WELL, THE WORD DOESN'T WORK. GOD'S NOT ANSWERING YOUR PRAYERS. AND I HAD THESE NEGATIVE THOUGHTS COME. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? I TURNED TO THESE VERSES, AND I SAID, FATHER, I KNOW THAT YOU HAVE GIVEN ME POWER. I CAN CONTROL MY THOUGHTS. I DO NOT HAVE TO LET THESE THOUGHTS OF FEAR AND WORRY AND STUFF BOTHER ME. AND I STARTED STANDING ON THESE VERSES. AND WHAT I DID, I STARTED ACTUALLY WALKING THROUGH OUR HOUSE. JAMIE WAS GONE, uh, WASHING CLOTHES. I WAS WALKING THROUGH THE HOUSE, AND I WAS SCREAMING AT THE TOP OF MY LUNGS, QUOTING SCRIPTURE, BECAUSE FOR ME TO DO THAT, IT FOCUSED MY ATTENTION ON THE SCRIPTURE, AND IT MADE MY THOUGHTS uh, GO WITH THE WORDS THAT I WAS SAYING. AND I JUST SAT THERE AND BUILT MY FAITH UP. AND ANYWAY, PRAISE GOD, GOD CAME THROUGH. WE HAD ENOUGH MONEY, AND WE'VE PROSPERED SINCE THEN. BUT I'M SAYING, IT WAS A STRUGGLE. IT WAS A FIGHT, ESPECIALLY FOR AN UNDISCIPLINED MIND THAT HAD JUST ALLOWED MY MIND TO GO WHEREVER CIRCUMSTANCES DIRECTED. AND THIS IS WHERE MOST PEOPLE ARE. THERE'S PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW. That IT'S NOT THAT YOU WANT TO DISBELIEVE GOD, BUT YOU JUST HAVEN'T TAKEN AUTHORITY OVER YOUR THOUGHTS. AND YOU ARE JUST LETTING CIRCUMSTANCES. YOU DON'T HAVE ENOUGH MONEY. THE DOCTOR SAYS YOU'RE SICK. YOU'VE GOT A PAIN IN YOUR BODY. YOUR MATE SAYS THEY'RE LEAVING. YOUR BOSS SAYS THEY'RE GOING TO HAVE TO CUT BACK. AND SO YOU'RE JUST HAVING THESE THOUGHTS COME, AND YOU DON'T DO ANYTHING TO RESIST THEM AND CONTROL THEM. YOU DON'T EVEN FEEL LIKE YOU HAVE THAT POWER AND AUTHORITY. THESE VERSES SAYS YOU HAVE SPIRITUAL WEAPONS THAT WILL CAST DOWN EVERY HIGH IMAGINATION, AND IT WILL BRING EVERY THOUGHT INTO OBEDIENCE TO CHRIST. BUT IT'S LIKE A MUSCLE. IT'S NOT GOING TO JUST HAPPEN AUTOMATICALLY. YOU HAVE TO DEVELOP IT. YOU HAVE TO START RESISTING THOUGHTS. AND ONE OF THE WAYS YOU DO IT IS THROUGH... MAN, YOU CAN PUT ON PRAISE AND WORSHIP MUSIC. I WAS JUST WALKING YESTERDAY, AND I WAS LISTENING TO SOME MUSIC BY A FRIEND OF MINE, ROY FIELDS, AND HE WAS SINGING SOME THINGS THAT, MAN, JUST REALLY REMINDED ME OF THINGS AND FOCUSED MY ATTENTION BACK TO WHERE IT NEEDED TO BE. AND SO YOU CAN PUT ON PRAISE AND WORSHIP MUSIC. YOU CAN GO TO STUDY IN THE WORD. YOU CAN GO TALK WITH A FELLOW BELIEVER, SOMEBODY WHO WILL BUILD YOU UP AND ENCOURAGE YOURSELF. BUT YOU NEED TO LEARN HOW TO ENCOURAGE YOURSELF IN THE LORD. AND ONE OF THE WAYS I DO THAT IS I PRAY IN TONGUES. THE BIBLE SAYS, 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 14, THAT WHEN YOU PRAY IN TONGUES, YOU EDIFY YOURSELF. THE WORD EDIFY MEANS TO BUILD UP, PROMOTE SPIRITUAL GROWTH. SO I'LL GO TO SPEAKING IN TONGUES AND BELIEVE THAT GOD INTERPRETS IT TO ME, AND I'LL BUILD MYSELF UP ON MY MOST HOLY FAITH, PRAYING IN THE HOLY GHOST, JUDE CHAPTER 1, VERSE 20. AND I SPEAK IN TONGUES, AND THEN I'LL... I'LL STUDY THE WORD, AND I'LL REBUKE THE DEVIL, BUT I JUST... YOU HAVE TO START FIGHTING, AND AFTER YOU START USING THESE SPIRITUAL WEAPONS, IT'S LIKE LIFTING WEIGHTS. AFTER A PERIOD OF TIME, you, YOUR MUSCLES BEGIN TO START BUILDING UP, AND YOU GET STRONGER AND BETTER AT IT. AND NOW I'VE GOTTEN TO WHERE I CAN LITERALLY CONTROL MY THOUGHTS. THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT TRY AND CONTROL THEIR ACTIONS, BUT DON'T DO A THING WITH THEIR THOUGHTS. BUT THE SCRIPTURE SAYS, PROVERBS CHAPTER 23, VERSE 7, AS HE THINKS IN HIS HEART, SO IS HE. YOUR LIFE IS GOING THE WAY OF YOUR DOMINANT THOUGHTS. IF YOU WANT TO CONTROL YOUR ACTIONS, CONTROL YOUR THOUGHTS. 
AND YOU KNOW, SOMETHING THAT HAPPENS TO ME OFTEN, I'LL HAVE PEOPLE COME UP TO ME IN SCHOOL AND THEY'LL ASK ME A QUESTION OR SOMETHING AND I'LL TALK TO THEM. AND THEN LATER I FIND OUT SOMEBODY ELSE COMES AND SAYS, WELL, they, THEY'RE DOING THIS AND THIS AND THIS. AND I SAY, OH, THAT'S NOT WHAT THEY TOLD ME. AND they, MY STAFF OFTEN TELLS ME THIS, THAT PEOPLE TELL YOU ONE THING AND THEN THEY TELL OTHER PEOPLE OTHER THINGS. IN OTHER WORDS, THEY KNOW THAT I'M GOING TO STAND THERE AND STAND ON THE WORD AND SAY, HERE'S WHAT SHOULD BE HAPPENING. HERE'S THE WAY YOU SHOULD ACT. AND SO THEY KNOW WHAT TO SAY AND THEY WILL SAY IT AROUND ME, BUT WHEN THEY'RE BY THEMSELVES OR WHEN THEY'RE WITH OTHER PEOPLE, THEY'LL SAY WHAT'S REALLY IN THEIR THOUGHT LIFE. YOU NEED TO GET TO WHERE YOU AREN'T HYPOCRITICAL. THAT IF YOU WOULD TALK A CERTAIN WAY AROUND ME OR AROUND SOMEBODY ELSE WHO'S BELIEVING GOD, THEN YOU WOULD TALK THAT SAME WAY WHEN YOU'RE BY YOURSELF. DON'T LET THAT SELF-TALK BECOME NEGATIVE. DON'T ALLOW YOURSELF TO JUST, DON'T ALLOW YOUR MIND TO JUST GO AND CONTEMPLATE WHAT YOUR FUNERAL'S GOING TO BE LIKE. CONTEMPLATE WHAT IT'S LIKE THAT YOU'RE NEVER GOING TO HAVE ENOUGH MONEY TO BE ABLE TO, TO BUY YOUR HOUSE AND TO DO THIS. QUIT THINKING THOSE KIND OF THINGS. SEE, ALL OF THIS HAS TO DO WITH YOUR IMAGINATION. WHAT YOU MEDITATE ON, WHAT YOU FOCUS ON. YOU HAVE TO FOCUS ON THE WORD OF GOD. AND YOU NEED TO FOCUS, MEDITATE TILL IT PAINTS A PICTURE. picture. YOU NEED TO SEE YOURSELF WELL, SEE YOURSELF PROSPERING, SEE YOURSELF DOING WHAT GOD HAS CALLED YOU TO DO. AND I TELL YOU, THAT'S IMPORTANT. AND ON THE CONVERSE SIDE, ON THE OPPOSITE SIDE, DON'T EVER LET YOURSELF SEE YOURSELF FAILING. DON'T ALLOW YOURSELF TO SEE YOURSELF SICK. YOU KNOW, THIS IS WHY JAMIE AND I, WE TRY NOT TO WATCH A LOT OF TELEVISION. WE WATCH SOME OF THE REAL OLDIES. THE THINGS THAT WERE ON IN THE 50s AND STUFF LIKE THAT. BUT EVEN THOSE, THE COMMERCIALS WILL KILL YOU. AND THEY COME ON AND THEY'RE ADVERTISING ALL OF THIS SICKNESS AND ALL OF THIS STUFF. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? WE SIT THERE WATCHING TV WITH A REMOTE IN OUR HAND. AND ANY TIME THEY COME ON AND START TALKING ABOUT YOUR ARTHRITIS OR ABOUT YOUR, YOU KNOW, WHATEVER IT IS, MAN, WE MUTE THAT THING. WE DON'T WANT TO HEAR THOSE WORDS OF UNBELIEF BECAUSE I DON'T WANT THOSE WORDS PAINTING A PICTURE ON THE INSIDE OF ME AS SICKNESS AND ARTHRITIS AND ALL OF THESE OTHER THINGS AS BEING NORMAL. I DON'T BELIEVE THAT THAT IS NORMAL FOR A CHRISTIAN. AND SO I DON'T ALLOW MYSELF TO THINK IT. I DON'T ALLOW EVEN OTHER PEOPLE TO SPEAK THIS STUFF AROUND ME. PEOPLE, YOU KNOW, AS THEY LEAVE, THEY'LL SAY, WELL, TAKE CARE, AND I'LL SAY FOR NOTHING, BECAUSE THE BIBLE SAYS IN PHILIPPIANS CHAPTER 4, BE CAREFUL FOR NOTHING. SO PEOPLE WILL SAY, TAKE CARE, AND I SAY FOR NOTHING. I'M NOT MEAN ABOUT IT, AND I USUALLY MAKE A JOKE OUT OF IT, BUT I GUARANTEE YOU, I COUNTER THINGS. I KEEP MY MIND STAYED UPON GOD. AND ISAIAH CHAPTER 26, VERSE 3 SAYS, THE LORD WILL KEEP HIM IN PERFECT PEACE WHOSE MIND IS STAYED UPON HIM. AND DID YOU KNOW THE WORD MIND THERE, THE HEBREW WORD IS Y-E-T-S-E-R, THE EXACT SAME WORD THAT WAS TRANSLATED IMAGINATION IN uh, GENESIS CHAPTER 6, VERSE 5, FIRST CHRONICLES 20, 8, 9, First Chronicles 29, 18, and other places. It's when you keep your imagination, your thoughts, your meditating on the Lord day and night, that's when you have perfect peace. If you don't have perfect peace, it's because your imagination is not stayed upon God. I'm out of time today, but I am going to continue this on my program tomorrow. I encourage you to please get this book. It will help you. It's a brand new book. I've also got CDs and DVDs where I'm teaching on the power of imagination. And I promise you, this is a deal changer. So listen to our announcer as he gives you the information about how to write or call and request these materials. And please do that today. We hope you were blessed by today's episode of The Gospel Truth. Andrew and Jamie wish to share their sincere gratitude for all the grace partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your generous partnership enables us to take the gospel, the nearly too good to be true news to the ends of the earth. May God richly bless you for your faithfulness. If you're not already partnering with Andrew Womack Ministries, we encourage you to join us in this great harvest today. Learn how to put your imagination to work for you when you get Andrew's brand new book titled, The Power of Imagination. This book is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. 
This new series on the power of imagination is also available as a CD or DVD album recorded live from a Gospel Truth seminar or in a DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. I'd really like to encourage you to get these products. This is my brand new book on the power of imagination. And I tell you, th I've mentioned this in a number of different teachings, but this is the first time I've just taught specifically on imagination. This is a deal changer. It's a game changer. And it would really bless you. We also have DVDs. This was taken from a live session. And then I have DVDs that were taken from our television program, and then we have CDs that were taken from one of my meetings. So we've got a number of different ways of you taking advantage of this, but I promise you, this teaching is something that not very many, I've never heard anybody else teach on this, and I believe it would really change your life. It has totally revolutionized my, my life, so please listen to our announcer and call and receive these materials. These valuable resources are also available in the Power of Imagination package. This package includes Andrew's brand new book, as well as your choice of the CD or the As Seen on TV DVD album. The Power of Imagination package has a catalog value of $50, but you can get it today for a gift of only $35. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. The individual topic highlighted on today's broadcast is available as an audio CD for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide today's teaching free of charge. You can order resources or become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time at 719-635-1111. Welcome to the AWM Minute, a small glimpse on how your partnership with Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College has allowed us to provide free ministry through our call center, including our prison ministry, where we are able to disciple thousands of prisoners. Andrew has always made his product available to prisoners for free. We started a prison Bible study a few years ago. If a prisoner reaches out and says, hey, is there a Bible study? We will send him or her the first lesson in the Bible study. Once they get done with one study guide, we send them a certificate of completion, you know, showing they graduated. Because just because they're behind bars doesn't mean they can't be free as God sees them. To the partners, I would have to say this. If you don't know it, we can't do what we do without you. Thank you, partners, for allowing us to change the lives of countless prisoners with the message of God's unconditional love and grace. To learn more about being a partner, visit awmi.net slash grace today.